Welcome back everyone. I hope you're having a great day. And in this episode, we have some major stock market headlines to discuss, such as Jeremy Siegel saying now is the time to buy stocks. Disney has plans to double their investment into their parks and their cruise lines. Instacart just went public and is the new hot IPO on the market. And some of the large positions within my portfolio have announced dividend increases this week as well, growing the passive income I collect each and every quarter. So in this episode, we're going to go over each of these events in detail, but before we do that, I am going to ask you to please hit that like button and subscribe. I'm the Gen Z Investor, and on this channel, we talk about the stock market, go over any major market news, and we track the progress of my personal dividend growth portfolio as well. So please hit that like button and subscribe. And now the first news item we have to discuss is Jeremy Siegel, the famous warden professor saying, with the stock market's current valuation, Buying stocks is a really good deal for long-term investors. So if we take a look at this article, long-term investors that are trying to build wealth should continue to buy stocks according to the Warren professor. Siegel told CNBC on Tuesday that the stock market's current valuation represents a really good deal, even as investors are worrying about a potential recession, elevated interest rates, or high inflation. The S&P 500 currently trades at a 4 PE ratio of about 19 times, which is slightly above the 5 and 10 year historical averages, which are set at 18.7 and 17.5 respectively. So overall, the market is trading somewhat in line with the 5 year average and slightly above the 10 year average in terms of a forward PE. And Siegel said the current stock market dynamic suggests long term returns of at least 5% after inflation. So post inflation returns of at least 5%. If you're a long-term investor, it's going to be a very healthy margin to build wealth over the long term. And as for the short term, Siegel expects the stock market to hold up relatively well in the year end, despite constant worries about inflation and what the Federal Reserve might do in response to that inflation. That's because the economy is holding up well and strong economic data, even though it may mean more interest rate hikes in the short term, is ultimately good for stock prices. And he gives the reasoning that, given that strength of the economy, and that's what the stock market loves. And that's why even if we have slightly hotter PPI or higher CPI, if we get real good economic data in there, you can see the stock market rally. And that's why I think we could still have a firm, not surging, but a firm equity market through the end of the year. So overall, Jeremy Siegel is saying, at the current forward PE ratio of 19 for the S&P 500, that's a very good deal and investors who are focused on long-term wealth creation should continuously invest in the market. And he says, we are getting some very good economic data. So as long as the economy is still growing, still performing very well, regardless of what's wrong with inflation and higher interest rates in the current short-term environment, over the long-term, the market is still the place to be and you should continually invest each and every month. So Jeremy Siegel is one of the more well-respected professors in the investment community. I do personally agree with many of his thoughts and opinions, so I am going to follow his advice in the current market environment, contribute more capital into my personal portfolio, and buy more stocks over time. And now we're going to continue on into the second major news headline, which is that Disney has plans to nearly double their investment into the parks and cruise line business. They have plans to double the investment to roughly $60 billion over the next few years. So if you've been a follower of Disney, they've gone through a tough time during the past few years in terms of stock price. From a peak of $113 per share in early 2023, the share price has now fallen by over 27% on the year-to-date chart. If we take a look at the five-year chart, this company is actually down over 25% over the past five years. And before the company cut their dividend, they were only paying out a minimal dividend as well. So even if you factor their previous dividend into these returns, you would still be in the red over the past five years if you've been a shareholder of Disney. So this company has been going through a very tough time as of late. And if we take a look at the company's latest investor presentation, a key driver of the negative results has been the performance of the media and entertainment division. This of course includes the linear networks, which is traditional cable, which has seen declining revenue and profits year after year. We can see 7.1 billion of revenue back in 22, down to 6.6 billion in the same quarter in fiscal 23, as well as operating income declined from 2.8 billion down to only $1.8 billion. And of course, in this same division is their streaming services, which are growing subscribers and the top line revenue number is growing, but this division is not yet profitable, posting losses year after year, and these losses are driving down overall profitability for the business. 
but why the company decided to invest and double their plan into $60 billion for their parks is because that is the one bright spot for Disney right now. If we take a look at their parks division, operating income for all three parts of domestic, international, and consumer products were high and profitable in the latest quarter, generating over $1.5 billion of operating income from the domestic parks alone. Revenue was up year over year for all these divisions, and of course, operating income did grow as well by a slight amount, showing some positives for Disney right now. So they're focusing on what's working, they're focusing on their key points of difference, no other competitors that they're fighting off in the streaming services have these in-person parks and attractions, so they're going to reinvest, improve these attractions, they are profitable, and hopefully these investments will grow profitability and demand in the future, and that's where they're planning to allocate their capital. So that's another major headline we have to discuss. And now we move on into topic number three. We have the IPO for Instacart. Of course, this is somewhat the Uber, but for groceries, this is a service where you can kind of purchase your groceries online and someone will go do the shopping for you and deliver them to your door. This company IPO'd at a price of $30. And we can see after the IPO went out, the stock instantly surged to over $42 per share. And then throughout the trading day, it continuously declined back down to around $33.70, where it closed on the day, still representing growth of 12% at the initial IPO. And over the past few days, I received numerous emails and comments asking for my thoughts on Instacart and whether or not I will be buying the company once they did go public. So of course, I am a dividend growth investor and I only buy well-established, profitable, cash flow generative companies that pay out a growing dividend to their investors. So of course, Instacart right now does not meet that criteria, does not mean it's not a great company, but for me personally, it's not the type of growth company I invest into. This company could climb and do very well over the next few years and I could miss out on those gains, but I'm okay with that. I'm personally not comfortable buying to a company this early on in their growth stage in the competitive market that Instacart is currently operating in. But I still think it'd be very helpful to potential investors who want to look into this company a little bit more to jump into their S1 and do a quick overview of the company's latest financials. So we can see in total, they've done over $29 billion of total gross volumes, had over 263 million orders, generate, generated cumulatively $2.2 billion of gross profit and over $400 million of adjusted EBITDA and have over 1,400 different retail banners available in their system. If we take a look at the balance sheet, this company has total cash and cash equivalents of around $1.8 billion with total current assets of around $2.9 billion. Compared to their total current liabilities of only 700 million, this company's in a great short-term financial position with a lot of cash on hand to fund their growth over time. And if we take a look at their total debt, not a lot of debt on the balance sheet, total liabilities for the entire company at only $774 million. So a lot of cash on hand to deal with all of these liabilities. And if we take a look, a majority of the long-term relate to leases, which I really don't put too much stress on. And of course, the other liabilities only make up $62 million. So overall, a pretty strong balance sheet for this young company that just hit the market. If we take a look at the income statement, for the six months ended June 30th, 2023, the company did show growing revenue, growing gross profits, and did show a six months period of actual profits of $242 million, which is a great sign. So the company has achieved profitability through the first six months of 2023. And of course, if we jump over to their cash flow statement, if we take the net change in operating activities, which generated $242 million of cash in the period, we subtract the purchase of PP&E, which is 22 million, leaving us with 220, and we add back the nine, I'm gonna to round to 10, $10 million of stock based compensation, which we can see right here is this expense. That would equate to around $210 million of actual free cash flow during the first six months of this year as well. So it is nice to see Instacart, a young hot company on the market, actually posting positive free cash flow numbers during 2023, which is somewhat of a rarity for new companies going public. So overall, Instacart is the new hot IPO. Let me know down in the description in the comments what your thoughts are on the company and if you plan to buy some shares on the market during the next few weeks. And overall, the last headline that we want to discuss is two of my largest positions, actually my number one holding Microsoft and my fourth largest position, JP Morgan Chase, have announced dividend increases this week on the same day. So Microsoft announced a 10% increase over their previous dividend, 
raising it by 70 cents per share per quarter to now 75 cents per quarter. So $3 per year in dividends coming from Microsoft for each share that I own. And JP Morgan Chase has also announced a dividend increase by 5%. They were paying out $1 per share per quarter previously. That is now up to $1.05 per share going forward. So some very nice dividend increases coming from two of my largest positions, which is going to nicely grow my growing passive income into this account year over year. So I want to thank you for tuning in. I'm going to wrap up the video here. In this episode, of course, we talked about why now is the time to buy stocks according to Jeremy Siegel. Disney's plan to double down on their parks and their cruise lines. Instacart, a new public company that is showing actual profits and free cash flow during the first few months of this year. And some major dividend increases from Microsoft and JP Morgan Chase, some of the largest holdings in my personal portfolio. So thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.